one. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Victor Valley Union High School District. We're here at Victor Valley High School uh, for the uh, open forum uh, to, to discuss and hear presentations regarding the merit system uh, with our district. My name is Ramiro Rubalcaba. I will serve as your moderator. I am the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources for our district. I uh, want to start off by thanking our principal, Ms. Nancy Neuer, and her team for hosting us in this beautiful facility. Uh, the team did a great job getting us ready. Also want to send a thank you to Dave Brittleson, Chris Riley, for the tech setup and to uh, allowing us to stream online uh, via YouTube. Really appreciate so that people at home can feel safe and still hear the presentations this evening. I uh, want to thank Blue Knight Security for their services and always being present. Thank you for being here. And a special shout out and thank you to all members of the classified service. Without you, we can't host these events. Without you, we cannot operate our district. So please give yourselves a round of applause. Members of the classified services, thank you very much. Awesome. A uh, couple of housekeeping items. Want to make sure that you know the restrooms are outside in the lobby. Uh, if you need to use the facilities, please feel free. Pursuant to a health order, everyone indoors is required to wear a face covering. I am currently more than 10 feet as the presenter. Presenters can remove their mask. However, when you're not speaking, we ask that you put your mask back on. Thank you. And we're in a very large venue. Feel free to spread out uh, where you feel comfortable. Uh, want to make sure, uh, review the expectation at all of our VBUHSD events. We have a high standard of professionalism and a respect for diversity of thought. So as the presenters present, we want to make sure we give them their space and their time so that they can present their point of view. And even if we disagree with that, we're going to give them that respect that they deserve. So with that being said, I want to start us off with some uh, context and an overview. On October 21st, uh, October 21st, 2021, the superintendent on behalf of the Board of Trustees received a petition from members of the classified service with the, uh, with the needed number of signatures in order to request a petition or, or request an election to decide on whether to terminate uh, the district's merit system. These signatures were verified by the district, and on December 16th at a, a board meeting, an open session, the Board of Trustees uh, voted to set an election for January 18th, 2022, for members of the classified service to vote whether to terminate the VBUHSD merit system pursuant to Ed Code 45319B, effective February 28th, 2022. The four sites that were uh, selected by the District Board of Trustees are the following. Adelanto High School, Lakeview Leadership Academy, Silverado High School, and Victor Valley High School. The polling will take place on the 18th of uh, January from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I want to emphasize that that will take place before work, during your duty-free uh, breaks, including lunch, and after work. Pursuant to Ed Code 45319, the board devised an identification system designed to protect against fraud. That means that every eligible uh, classified member, which includes members of the classified service, classified management, and confidentials, must present a photo ID, such as a, a state-issued driver's license or a badge from work that has photo uh, identification in order to receive a ballot. Uh, this includes, of course, confidential employees, management, and classified uh, members of of the classified service. The Board of Trustees also established election procedures to ensure ballot secrecy and procedural safeguards to protect against fraud. Next, I'd like to point out that the Board of Trustees, pursuant to Ed Code 45319C, selected a tabulation committee, which is required by law. The tabulation will committee consists of the following. Uh, Caleb Castaneda, Board Vice President, Arnold Rocha, Commissioner, uh, Personnel Commission Vice President, and Stephanie Felix, member of the Classified Service. Those three members will serve to tabulate the uh, election, uh, which will take place on January 18th, 2022, here in this location at 5 p.m. So the tabulation will take place here, anyone who wants to attend, or you can also view it online, just like we're streaming this forum this evening safely from home. Uh, so just wanted to point that out. Uh, now I'd like to just discuss what the format will be this evening. I will serve as your moderator, and then uh, we will have presentations uh, starting with, in favor of terminating the Victor Valley Union High School District Merit System, 
uh, represented by Kenny Wilson, Senior Labor Relations Representative, who will be afforded 15 minutes. Your 15 minutes will start when you begin speaking. That will be followed by a presentation in opposition of terminating the VVUHSD Merit System, also afforded 15 minutes, presented by Patricia, Patricia Duell, Director of Classified Personnel for Barstow Unified School District, John Caldicott, uh, retired Director of Classified Personnel, Newport Mesa, and Mr. George Cole, uh, who represents the, what is the name, Deshaun? California Schools Personnel Association. So welcome to all of you. The presentations will be followed by a 30 minute allocation for questions and answers from the audience. Uh, if you do want to ask a question, I ask that you please stand in line here. You ask your question, then you go back to your seat and uh, you identify who you're directing your question to, whether it's in favor of or opposed to terminating. Then that will be followed by uh, closing remarks in the same order. Kenny Wilson, Senior Labor Relations uh, Representative will have 10 minutes. And then Patricia Duell, John Caldicott, and Mr. George Cole will also have 10 minutes uh, to do closing remarks and we will adjourn. So at this time, I would like to welcome uh, to present Mr. Kenny Wilson, Senior Labor Re Relations Representative. Please help me welcome him. See if I can spill water all over the place. Okay. So thank you all for, for being here for the questions. Um, just a little bit of background. Uh, my name is Kenny Wilson. I'm the senior labor relations representative for CSEA out of the Rancho Cucamonga field office. I started my career with CSEA in 1990 as a classified employee in the Palmdale School District which was also my first experience with merit systems. Palmdale School District is a merit commission district and continues to be a merit commission district. Um, I, through, through my career, I'm in my 32nd year. <laughs> uh, uh, through my career, I've spoke in opposition to merit systems where they're not working, where they're failing to do the work that they're supposed to do. I've also spoken in favor of merit systems where we've moved elections to gain merit systems in school districts. Um, so I'd like to start with just a little bit of background and for, for clarity, what a merit system is. A merit system or civil service system or personnel commission are all pretty much synonymous. It's not a new system. Early in the 1800s, there was a, a patronage system where the spoils of, uh, of jobs or the, 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 it was a common method of filling government jobs. Uh, it took the tragedy of the shooting of President John Garfield by a disgruntled office worker in 1881 to focus enough attention on the practice to spark legislative reform. Congress passed the Civil Service Act of 1882, which set up the first civil service system, which is also synonymous with the merit system. In the following years, state and civil service systems flourished, but it wasn't until 1936 the first merit system uh, law for school districts was established. It was California that became the leader of the national movement to implement the merit system in school districts. When in the LAUSD, more than 700 non-teaching employees were fired on the day after a school board election to make room for hiring political spoilsmen, they call them, uh, political favors for people that helped in their campaigns. The merit system is a method of personnel management, which is designed to promote the efficiency and economy of the workforce and the good of the public by providing the selection and retention of employees, promotional opportunities, in-service training, and other related matters based on merit, fitness, and the principle of like pay for like work. The philosophy of the merit system. In our democracy, citizens have an expectation that governmental processes be conducted in a fair, efficient, and open manner and that public institutions be accountable for representing the public interest. Merit system principles emphasize these values and provide a personnel selection system that is open to all and supposed to be free from political interference. A school district personnel management should be implemented consistent with the following merit system principles. Recruitment of job applicants should be from sources representing all segments of society and selection and advancement should be determined solely 
based on relative ability, knowledge, and skills after fair and open competition, which ensures that all receive equal opportunity. If that was happening here, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. All employees and applicants for employment should receive fair and equitable, equitable treatment in all aspects of, aspects of personnel management without regard to political affiliation, race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, disabling condition, or sexual orientation, or who you know. School district employees should be managed and treated fairly and consistently and be engaged in work that serves the best interest of students. Employees should be retained and promoted based on merit as measured by the adequacy of their performance and professional advancement, achievement, sorry. Employees should be protected from arbitrary employment actions and afforded due process rights consistent with applicable law. These are all principles of the merit system. So what are some of the responsibilities of the personnel commission of our personnel commissioners? The personnel commission has three core responsibilities as defined in the California education code. They're as follows. Oversee a personnel management program based on merit principles that ensure selection and promotion of employees is based solely on qualifications through competitive examination. Develop and administer policies governing employment matters to ensure the fair and equitable treatment of employees within the classified service. Conduct appeal hearings on matters involving employee disciplinary action, employment examinations, and personnel policies and procedures. These are the responsibilities of the personnel commissioners. So what are the duties of the personnel commission? The personnel commission establishes and maintains a position classification plan which includes creating job descriptions, setting minimum qualifications, and allocating classifications to salary raises, ranges using standards that provide equal pay for equal work. They adopt guidelines to analyze jobs and develop valid employment examinations. They adopt rules and procedures to be followed concerning such employment subjects as applications, examinations, employment eligibility, hiring, promotions, discipline, and other rules necessary to carry out classified personnel administration. So what are some of the advantages of the merit system? Merit system ensures the selection of qualified candidates solely based on merit and fitness through a process of competitive examination. It removes appointments and promotions from the political and personal arenas. It takes, it removes the element of it's not what you know, it's who you know. It assures that all concerned receive notice of position vacancies through public notice, an announcement that includes duty, function, statements, and minimum eligibility requirement. The merit system gives employees the right to appeal disciplinary actions and have a formal hearing before the personnel commission. The personnel commission can overturn board imposed, uh, school board imposed disciplinary actions. It provides job protection in a former classification for employees who are promoted and required to serve a probationary period in the new classification. Should an employee not pass probation, the employee is returned to a position in the former classification rather than left without a job. It requires that the district maintain and use personnel commission rules so that classified employees know the rules. It provides for consistency and assurances that changes in administrative personnel do not result in drastic changes in personnel procedures and policies. Provides for a probationary period of six months rather than the one year uh, that for non-merit systems. It, it assures that appointments to positions are made only from appropriate employment list and eligibility list. So why does the merit system sometimes fail? In a recent study commissioned by the California School Personnel Commissioners Association, retired personnel commissioner David Holmerund identified several key reasons where the merit system was voted out by the employees. Reasons similar to what we're dealing with here. This report was commissioned because the merit system has realized a significant number of merit systems being terminated recently. 
In the past few years, the number of merit systems in California has dropped over 10%. The elections by classified workers to remove a dysfunctional merit system is becoming more commonplace. Citing from the Homo Run report, I will point out some commonalities between other merit systems where the classified employees voted yes to terminate the merit system and the issues we experience here. Loss of trust. One of the leading causes where a, mis where a mis merit system was voted out is directly related to the classified workers losing faith in the Personnel Commission and its personnel director. Since 2012, classified workers of Victor Valley Union High School District have been seeking help from the Personnel Commission to correct problems. The Personnel Commission has failed to engage in meaningful problem-solving steps at every opportunity. The Personnel Commissioners have actively ignored the requests of classified workers to hear grievances and seek resolutions related to the poor administration of this merit system. The Personnel Commission fails to include the classified bargaining unit input into the evaluation of the personnel director. Some of these main issues have been going on since 2012 when the personnel director, the current personnel director was appointed to his position. Another reason that merit systems fail is a lack of consistency and overwhelming use of personal interpretation in the hiring, recruitment, absence leaves, advanced placements, promotions, and terminations, because it's based on one person's interpretation and not as a system. Poor communication with the membership and the association president. Lack of an open and fair recruitment process. Current employees are being screened out when they should not be, when it comes to promoting from within, at the sole discretion of the personnel director. Advanced placement salary is not consistent and has been a huge problem for many years because it's given based on the sole opinion of the director of classified personnel. This practice lacks credibility, transparency, and accountability, or even a consistent practice or matrix. The personnel director clearly favors hiring more from the outside candidates than from pro promoting within. Reclassifications have not been done for almost 10 years. This violates the commission's own rule requiring yearly review. The commission in, in rule 30.2.2, the commission shall review the classification plan on a continuous recurring basis with at least one third of all classifications reviewed yearly. That simply does not happen here. The personnel director creates new jobs without negotiating or modifies jobs without negotiating with the exclusive rep. The Personnel Commission allows the director to interfere with a proper authorization of out-of-class pay. For over 10 years, out-of-class pay has been based on the interpretation of the personnel director rather than on the clear language of our contract. The personnel director inserts himself into the staffing levels of departments. Personnel director does not hire based on the sites and departments needs or the requests and needs that come from department heads. He is permitted to control and dictate who the district will hire and when they will hire. This action is well outside the authority of the personnel director, but the personnel commissioners continue to allow this to happen. The personnel director interferes with negotiations and the CSEA contract. The personnel director continually makes decisions based on, based on his like or dislike of a person. His treatment to those he does not like is very different to those he likes. The personnel director is very unprofessional, unfair, and unethical because it is known who he doesn't like. But despite many attempts to engage the commissioners to correct this behavior, the personnel commission actively chooses to allow the personnel director to engage in behavior which is directly in conflict with the principles of the merit system. During a recent closed session meeting of the Personnel Commission, the commissioner's microphone was left on during closed session, which gave a real peek into what the commissioners and the personnel director think of the classified employees they're here to serve. Through the open mic, classified workers could hear each personnel commissioner uh, making comments. 
one of the commissioners started started off by saying we clearly need to kick somebody in the shin personnel director can be uh, the personnel director makes comments of the same along the same lines one of the personnel director commissioners is heard saying i'm done with that union lady speaking about the association's elect uh, the association's labor relations representative these very comments are directly counter to the principles of the merit system The classified workers of Victor Valley High School District, including confidential management and bargaining unit workers, have a chance to stop this unfair, disrespectful treatment by the merit system. Simply by voting yes to terminate the merit system on January 18th. Can the merit system work? Yes, it can. But in over 10 years of trying to make our merit system work at Victor Valley and work the way it's supposed to, it's clear we must remove the current merit system by voting yes on January 18th. We can ensure, can we ensure equitable, equitable opportunities for advancement? Yes. Vote yes on January 18th. Can we be part of the decision-making process? Yes. But all we have to do is go vote yes on January 18th to start to make that happen. Can we remove the dysfunctional merit system in our school district? Yes, we can. Go vote January 18th. But we cannot expect anyone else to make this change for us. To win this campaign, we must get to the polls and vote yes to remove the merit system. Make no mistake, your vote counts. To remove the merit system in Victor Valley, we need almost 300 yes votes. If you don't vote, we will be left with a dysfunctional system into the foreseeable future. There will be protocols to ensure your safety while voting, while allowing you to vote. All ballots must be cast in person and you are eligible to vote on January 18th, even if you're out sick on a vacation day or another type of leave. But you most must vote yes and vote in person on January 18th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kenny Wilson. At this time, I would like to call up Patricia Duell. No, George Cole. I'm sorry. At this time, I'd like to call up Mr. George Cole. Help me welcome Mr. George Cole. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is George Cole. Tell you a little bit about myself. I have 36 years of merit system experience as an administrator in the merit system. <laughs> I started right here, Victor Valley, right after you, Victorville uni, Unified, right? All the high school unified here in the high desert. And I was a second director hired. I came on in 1987 when this was a brand new merit system. And there was, we had 200 employees throughout the entire district. And so <clears throat> when I was hired, I came on as a classified director. And after about a year, uh, they said, you know, and I agree, was, we're way too small to have, have a director all by himself. And then you have an assistant soup. So I became the assistant superintendent. I was here for 12 years. Uh, I worked through a lot of issues here in this district and I watched the growth as it, as it came about. And then when I left, I moved moved on to other things and went up to the Bay Area to retire where the salaries were higher. <laughs> you know, so and I've come back here after 35 years. Now, all during that time, when I retired as a public servant, like most all of you are out there, I became the executive director of the state association for personnel commissioners. I'm the one that had Mr. Homerud, it was my board and myself, we're the ones that ask him to do that study. And it's just for the reason that you have. We want every district, every merit district to know and to understand, and we want the unions, whether it's CSEA, whether it's uh, SEIU, the Teamsters, whatever union we're working with, we want them to know as well, because this is, this is a, the kind of blueprint that's gonna help us fix it. Now, I, and I'm now retired. I put in 10 years after all my time in school district, 
I put in 10 years as the executive director, which was my goal. And I retired at the end of our annual conference in 2020. And now Mr. Philip Gordillo is heading up the association. She, she, he has talked to us and he has asked us to come over here and assist. And that's what we do. I've been throughout the state. This is probably my seventh or eighth time to where we went in to talk about voting out mayor systems. And only once has that happened since I've been in a school district because what we have done with our team, we go out and we fix it, you know, and that's what we're here to do. After you hear Patty and then after you hear Mr. Caldecott, I think you'll see that we have a system, you know, it's we're here to make it work. And what, what you said, you know, if it's true, and we need to explore that. But there's always a solution to the problem. And the solution is not getting rid of the merit system that has worked so effectively over the years with most people. You know, the solution is to be able to work together as a team in the district. And I've known Mr. Dickinson. He's been on my board. I've known him for a long time. And the, what the guy you described here today is someone I don't recognize because that's not how he has portrayed himself. In fact, I've used him to help me go into districts and assist them when they're having problems with the mayor system as well. He's very knowledgeable and I don't know the situation here. I really don't. So I just know that, you know, what has happened is there has been some roadblocks, according to people out there, that they are seeing that they're not getting a service. But I think after you hear us go through our, uh, our few minutes we have here for the uh, pro, I think everyone's going to see that when we walk out of here tonight, we'll have a solution. We'll have a possible way. We'll give you a roadmap for fixing the problem. And that's what we're here for. Thank you. Ms. Duell is up now. So I am Patricia Duell. I have one L, not two at the end of my name. Um, I was asked to come speak here on the pro side. And I'm going to say I have 20 years as a classified employee in three different school districts, all merit districts. I started out up in Berkeley Unified, and while I was there in Berkeley Unified the first time, I uh, they tried to vote out the merit system there. They were unsuccessful, partly because of some of the mechanics of voting it out. From there, I went to Apple Valley. Some of you may remember me from there. I was with the Apple Valley Unified School District for 10 years as the director in a merit system. Like George, when George was talking about some of the different directors, I was there from 04 to 2014. I retired in June of 2014. They voted it out in December. I was already gone. I actually took my CalPERS retirement and then I came back because I thought I missed being in personnel. I missed being in school districts and Berkeley opened back up. So I did the seven hour commute from Apple Valley to Berkeley for two and a half years. I was the director up there from 2017 to 2019. Now, while I was in Apple Valley is when Barstow voted out the merit system. Now, this was a merit system very similar to yours that was established in 1967, well before the EERA was passed in 1976, well before it was meet and negotiate, it was meet and confer. The merit system has been around and it has survived in many school districts because it's an it's a extra added protection for the classified employees. It's not a detriment, it's just extra. In Barstow, they voted it back in. They voted it out in 2012 for very similar reasons that Kenny mentioned today. I will concur with George, uh, everything he talked about with your current director, I am not aware of, I haven't seen it, but then I don't, I'm not an employee here in Victor Union. The CSPCA, other fellow directors, other 
fellow merit systems are here to help. I ask, take into account 65 years of experience with merit system in this district. Don't vote it out because of something recent. Be willing to see if it can be fixed, be improved. It's 65 years of your history. Barstow voted it out. They were established the same time in 67 as a merit district. They voted it back in because they found out it's not all wine and roses when it's not a merit district. They voted it back in. Is it perfect? No, there is not a perfect merit system out there. There's not. There's problems in every single merit district, whether you're up north, whether you're down south, whether you're in San Diego. All I ask as a sitting director in a merit system, and yes, it's a small district, but I've been in a larger district. I've been in a urban district. I've been in a metropolitan district. Every district interprets it slightly different as a merit district, but the main principle, like pay for like work, what we call the top three ranks, those are some of the absolutes. And they're what help give current employees a step up. If there's other issues, CSPCA can help try to redirect and correct whatever deficiencies there are. So that's what I have to say. Next up will be Mr. John Talcott. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is John Caldicott. I've worked in four merit system districts and two non-merit districts, so I, I came out today to give you a glimpse of what it's like in a non-merit district, for one thing, and be a resource for questions. But I think we can all agree, since George was here, it's all his fault. Yeah. Right? right? Um, the moral of the story is it's never one person's fault. Systems are run by people. And sometimes people fall short. And I'm willing to accept that you have problems that need to be resolved. And even if they're just perceptions of problems, they need to be clarified and information is not getting out. I wrote down all of the issues that you have, but I also, before I got here, wrote down some of the things that I would expect. Misunderstandings, the role of the director in the district, conflicts over decisions made, hiring issues, just not getting the most out of the merit system, inefficiency. That's what I expected to hear, and most of your areas fall in the category. Kenny, you did an excellent job describing the merit system, so I don't need to talk about how the merit system operates or what it is designed to do. It's run by people, and people that aren't communicating for whatever reason, I lay no blame. On the other hand, I blame everyone. Is it the commission's fault? Yes. Is it the director's fault? Yes. Is it every employee's fault? Well, we need to make sure we get out there and advertise what the merit system is about. Who evaluates the director? That's up for discussion. Whatever happens, the feedback needs to get the director in a way that is understood. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is what is a non-merit district? Is this a solution? And you know what you're getting rid of because you've been in it for a long time. Do you know where you're going to? Um, so I spent eight years in non-merit districts. Um, one, I think that was uh, overall district, very efficient in, in many programs and lots of other ways. The other one was a complete disaster. I won't mention their names, um, but they had a few things in common as a non-merit district. The director reports to the superintendent. And I want you to keep in mind, is this going to solve our problem? Um, decentralized testing. Um, the director doesn't decide most things. Um, some In the one district, the principal screened the applications and decided who to interview and who to hire. Uh, it's all decentralized. And that's a large district. 
That's not a small operation. Um, there's no top three ranks. That's not even a concept. Merit is not a concept. Far less qualified applicants are hired. Those complaints are heard. Why does the, the PTA president get the job as school secretary? Because they applied, the principal screened them in, they got hired. Um, supervisors pick who to interview and who to hire. Um, discipline appeals go to the board. And you know, in some districts, the board really doesn't question what the superintendent does. And I, in some districts they do, but in many districts, what the superintendent does is approved by the board. It's not a real appeal system. And so that is a concern. There is no a perfect HR system. Um, to be honest, there is no perfect negotiation system. I've also been the chief negotiator in a school district and at the assistant superintendent level. Um, and it's not perfect. So be careful what you're getting rid of. Number three issue is what people have said. This can be fixed. I have not, I've been a troubleshooter for CSPCA. I've been in school district employment after retirement and before retirement, 41 years. And I've gone to many districts with George and with others to troubleshoot and listen to people. If you ask us to, CSPCA will get a team together and come out and listen to everyone and identify what issues, what the issues are and what the possible solutions are. And we would present that to everyone in a transparent way. We're not coming out to protect anyone. We're coming out to make sure the system is intact and working for the employees. You decide, and I do have to say, employees decide. You decide on the 18th. You decide what the fate of the merit system is. That's your decision. I would also say the merit system is an insurance policy. I view it as a second contract. You have the contract and that's what it is. You also have the commission rules. Both have applicable force. Non-merit districts don't have a second contract and they don't have an insurance policy. I'm here to tell you as a director from non-merit districts, the merit system is a deterrent for bad behavior. Whether that is wherever that bad behavior is and it can be the top leadership because there aren't the checks and balances in a non-merit district that there are in a merit district. So I thank you very much for the opportunity to look forward to answering any questions you may have. Am I on time for Meryl? You're right on five seconds. So oh, be careful well, five circuit. seconds? Yep. Oh, shoot. Sure. Yeah. All right, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, another thank you to Patricia Duell, <coughs> to Mr. John Caldicott, and Mr. George Cole. Thank you. At this time, we're going to open it up for questions. If you would like to ask a question, please identify who the question is directed to, uh, whether it's in favor of terminating or whether it's in opposition of terminating, so that uh, the appropriate person can then uh, respond. So at this time, if anybody would like to come up and ask a question, uh, the mic is on. Uh, feel free to ask a question. I want to uh, advise you in advance that uh, we have allocated 30 minutes. Uh, hopefully, everyone gets to ask a question. But at the 30 minute mark, we will cut it off. And I apologize in advance if we do not answer everyone's question. So at this time, the mic is open for questions. My question um, is in favor, of, for in favor of terminating. It's been over 10 years of the dysfunction and the people have been suffering. The question is, or the question I have is why um, have the PC allowed it to go on for this long? I, either one of you can comment. Um, you can respond, and then if, if you, we can start. Go ahead. And then if you would like to comment as well, you can as well. Thank you. And once you've asked your question, you can sit down. Thank you. Oh, you have another one? That's fine. Yeah. That's, it's it's an excellent question. It's a question uh, we've been asking ourselves for 10 years. We've been jumping up and down screaming for some kind of help. I understand that the uh, California Schools per uh, Personnel Commission is a, is a good resource. Uh, we met in Pasadena when they voted to eliminate the Personnel Commission as well. Uh, um, 
It's an excellent question. Why has it gone on so for so long? We have these resources. Our personnel commission should know about these resources. Our personnel director does know about these resources. Why have they not been brought in instead of adopting the approach to where we ignore classified employees? I don't have a great answer, but uh, you know that's the answer I've got so far. I don't know if you want to respond. I think we have. Um... Well, I've had the incredible opportunity to do some interim assignments, and they usually send me to places that have difficulties. Um, and I will tell you, this one district that I'm thinking of um, a couple of years ago, uh, when I came in, um, complete disarray, honestly. When I talked to the commission, they didn't know. And I said, you know, every time I walk down the hallway, somebody pulls me aside. And, and one person in particular, the person at the front counter said, John, I've been here for 30 years. I didn't know what the merit system was until you showed up. I had no idea. Well, that is a problem. And it was a disaster. The commission did not know. And I told them, we had the opportunity to hire a new director. The staff came together. I made them the board of directors of classified personnel. I was an equal member of that team. And they shone, they shined from day one. They told me what the problems are and we set out to fix them. 40 vacant special ed positions open. No one knew what was going on. When I left, there were zero vacancies. There are solutions to every one of your problems. It takes a little work and people need to listen to each other. And once the new director was hired, um, he, everything was in good order to start out with. And he's been there a year, he's done an excellent job. And he is listening to employees. Uh, number one key, how do you solve problems? Listen to employees. Thank you. Go ahead and ask your second question. Okay. So my second question is, why are there hundreds of classified during the petition process having such horror stories of the PC Commission? You know, I, whenever I go in the last 41 years, the first thing I start with is where are the misunderstandings? And 90% of the time when I'm finished gathering the misunderstandings, my job is done. There is no great answer to that. Why something would last for 10 years and not be resolved is a dysfunctional situation, in my opinion. If people, if people have that perception, and if you're, I'm assuming it's more than one employee, and that can be solved, but people need to do the hard work of listening and being critical about what they're doing and deciding a course of action. And I believe that CSPCA has the resources to come in from the outside to hear the voices and help solve the problems. Um, but it all starts with employees, I'll be honest with you. It starts and ends with employees. When, when they are heard, problems can be solved. People understand if they have been listened to, they understand they will not always get their way, but they have to be heard. And apparently people are not being heard. And I don't, I don't need to blame anybody, but what is the go forward solution? It has never done me any, be any benefit to go back and find out exactly what everybody did to have it go wrong. Going forward is what is important is what are the solutions to bring this merit system together. Because I assure you, if you have problems in a non-merit district, in a merit district, you will have more problems in a non-merit district unless things are solved. Solve them with having your insurance policy intact would be in my advice. Katie, would you like to respond to that? <clears throat> It is a great question. Why do we have so many uh, so many outstanding issues and for 10 years? And I, I absolutely believe that we need to solve these problems. And there are a number of ways to solve them. The, the solution that we've landed on here, not 
without much thought and, and many efforts at trying to fix the current merit system, the solution we landed on here is to vote the merit system out so that we can start fresh without the hurdles that are in the way because of the current system and the, the relationship that has built up for over 10 years. So again, it, the, the solution that the classified employees at Victor Valley have come up with, and we'll find, it, we'll, we'll find out for sure on the 18th, is to start fresh without the burden of the merit system. We can always, if it doesn't work years down the road, we can bring it back in. We can vote it back in the same way we voted out. Do you have another question? I have a couple. Couple more. Is there anyone else? If you do want to have ask a question, please line up just so that we're fair and making sure that others get an opportunity to ask their questions. Go ahead. Okay. So my other question: Why are all the folks under the PC terrified to vote? Um, our classified employees are terrified to vote. Um, we the system is broken based on who is on it. So why are they so terrified? A little bit closer to the mic. So why are classified employees afraid to vote in this election? Quite simply, from the classified employees that I have spoken to and from classified leadership that have relayed the same thing, they're terrified of retaliation. They're terrified that if we fail in recalling or eliminating the merit system, they're terrified that they will be uh, um, retaliated against from the current merit system and the current system that's in place. That's the fear that, that has been expressed to me from classified employees. Um, I don't understand why employees would feel that they would be retaliated against. Um, so I, it's not clear to me where that would be coming from. Is that coming from the district? It's from employees who were involved in the previous voting that were actually went up to cars, had um, the director go up to cars and they felt retaliated against. And what I would encourage is kind of Q&A, not necessarily another debate, but Q&A, ask the question so that they can respond. Okay, well, retaliation is unacceptable. Um, it's the worst offense that you can come up with. If you do something wrong, that's one thing. If you retaliate against somebody, um, that's horrible. So it needs to be stopped and people need to enforce proper decorum. And who would do the enforcement of that? Would that be our PC commission? Well, they're, they're not out there enforcing, but you know, every management employee um, should be responsible in conducting this very serious business that is the business of law. Um, so it's everyone's responsibility to report it and to respond to it and to stop it. It can't happen. And who, <laughs> Sorry. if it came, um, just yeah. based on that, if it came from the director, who would, what management is above the director? Would that be the PC commission? The personnel commission supervises the director. And I will tell you that was a problem in this other district things were not getting to the personnel commission. And I don't know the facts, but the facts need to get to the supervisor. Same thing with the principal. Something happens on a campus, principal doesn't know about it, most likely it will continue. So they need to hear it and they need to hear it in a proper format. Okay, thank you. Did you have another question? I have one more question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we have a roadmap. Um, <clears throat> which is the rules. Does the CESPCA have the authority to take action to ensure that the dysfunction is corrected? Go ahead. The, the CSPCA is a professional resource. So they are used to coming in and evaluating facts, determining what issues are there and making recommendations to the commission. That's what, that's what we do. We're most of us volunteers. Some of us do interim assignments and other specific jobs, but that's what we're trained to do. And so you get the top people from merit systems that are used to problem solving coming in and making recommendations. And I, for one, am an objective person. 
And so when I come in, believe me, my eyes are open and my ears are open. And I'm not there to protect anything. I'm there. I'm a problem solver. That's my number one skill. Um, so we have to listen and resolve problems. But yes, CSPCA is really your number one line of defense to help you. Uh, Kenny, did you want to respond to that? No, I'll say that first. Okay. Was that the last question you asked? That was my last question. That was your last question. Yep. Thank you. Uh, would you like to step forward to ask your question? Uh, my name is. If you can get a little closer to the mic. My name is Selena Gregg, and I'm speaking in favor of removing the Personnel Commission. Um, I want to thank Kenny for bringing the issues that we're experiencing. It sounds like the people who are defending keeping it don't, are not aware of the issues that are going on in our district and that we've been um, encountering over the years. But earlier, you brought up uh, something about insurance policy, that the PC rules are an insurance policy. And so I just wanted to speak to that in terms of or have a question answered in terms of, can we get those commission rules and are those negotiated into our contract? Uh, the com commission rules in every district are online. They should be on the website. Uh, they're maintained by the commission, distributed by the director. And, you know, that's a sign of lack of communication. The people are out there that don't know what the merit system is about. So one of the recommendations might be for people to get out to the sites, to the employees, and talk about the provisions of the merit system. But the rules are there as a matter of law. Are they negotiated? Anything that is negotiable is run through CSEA by law before it ends up in a commission rule. So it's, it should be a partnership between the district, the commission, and CSEA, whoever the union is. Thank you. Do you want to respond? So I agree with John. The uh, the personnel commission rules are online. They're available. They're easily accessible to us. Um, are they negotiated? <clears throat> personnel commission rules as a whole are not generally negotiated. Uh, they are adopted by the personnel commissioners. But keep in mind, we are supposed to, we as classified employees and CSEA in most cases as the largest bargaining unit, has input into those rules. We can make changes, we can make suggestions for changes, we can make suggestions for modifications. If our commissioners are hearing us, when we try to do that here, it does not happen. John, I'm sorry, I'll get, I'll get right to you. John did a, a, an excellent job of describing what happens if we don't have a merit system. And while I'm sitting there listening to the, the perils of not having a merit system, what I'm hearing is exactly what we've got now, except that without the merit system, we'll have more input, more access to uh, uh, credible resources rather than what we've got now. I'm sorry, I, she's got another question or a, a follow-up? That's fine, if you, yeah, if you can get to the mic, please. And then me or John. And if we can just stick to the questions, yes. right? I just wanna clarify, if the personnel commission goes away, and we don't have those personnel commission rules, are we able to negotiate those rules into our contract when the first one, the merit system goes away? <laughs> okay, excellent, <laughs> yes. So are we, are we a, can we negotiate personnel commission rules into our contract? I wanna say yes, because as long as there's mutuality, anything can be negotiated. But it's important to note, in your current collective bargaining agreement, you already have a discipline process negotiated into your contract. Can we make proposals? And, and actually what's likely to happen is once we vote yes on January 18th to remove the merit system, uh, CSEA will immediately follow up with the demand to bargain the effects of removing the merit system. So we will be able to negotiate. That doesn't mean we'll be able to, to, to you know, have the panacea contract that we want. But yes, we can negotiate a lot of the terms into our contract. Thank you. So do you want to respond? Go ahead. Barstow Unified voted it out in 2012. And in the process, they then sat down at the table and they did in fact put several articles from the rules into the contract. They're still in the contract now, okay? They didn't get everything they wanted and they interpreted stuff because again, it's negotiations, like you said, you know, they can, you guys can ask, district employer can say maybe, yes, no, whatever, it's a negotiations piece. Okay, they added some stuff, they took away some stuff. 
Um, and now they brought it back. And now I, I can tell you that a lot of the stuff is very similar to what is in the rules. There's some stuff that is different. It does create somewhat of a conflict. However, um, most of the merit system absolutes are still there. I would like to address one thing as far as the, uh, the other person who had the issue as far as telling the commission and stuff like this. I had a commissioner walk up to me at a conference one time and they were like, how do you tell your commissioners this? And I said, because I have communication with my commissioners. That's a key point. Okay. My commissioners know in Barstow, they can walk into my office anytime and ask me questions. Whenever I get a complaint, whenever I get something, I call my commissioners. I have three of them. I have one that reports to the board. I have one that reports to CSEA and I have one that's a joint. When they evaluate me, that board representative goes and talks to the board and the superintendent to get their input on my eval. That CSEA rep on the commission goes and talks to the president, the e-board and all of that to get input for my evaluation. I'm evaluated every year. The joint, the person voted by both of them, they go out and they talk, they, they go to a site, two or three of them. They talk to classified employees to get the input for my evaluation, okay? Now I will say this, if you have commissioners who are not being communicative, who aren't getting out there to see what's going on, yeah, CSPCA needs to come in and say, we need to have some, provide some guidance and maybe get them redirected because they do have a guidance role, okay? They're not elected, they can't be recalled, they are just appointed. However, they have an obligation to oversee the processes that that director is managing on a day-to-day -day basis. Just from a technical standpoint, there is a difference between the merit system law and contract language. So when, as a chief negotiator, when I was not the merit system director, I know full well the negotiating process. It favors the district, to be honest with you, because you can make proposals, you can go to impasse and have fact finding. The last best offer is implemented, can be implemented by the Board of Education. So there is no absolute in negotiations. I have faith that if you people bargain in good faith, that some things would end up in, in, in the contract. Um, but the rule of three ranks is a matter of law. One final comment. I had a board member uh, in a non-merit district tell the superintendent to hire somebody. And when I looked at the list and how they qualify, trying to do some version of merit, um, they were 19 on the list. The superintendent directed the HR department to hire that person. That's how non-merit districts meet, do it. And you ne don't necessarily have a right to have that information. Did you have a question? Go ahead. So I, Maybe you can just step up to the mic. So I am Tanya and I'm the CSU president. Um, so when the lead person that took on the personnel commission um, requested for the merit system to be moved, I had them send the person that's going to speak in the condo or move in the merit system. And my question is to the people that are here that are asking us to um, retain the merit system, did you investigate the issues that are happening here? Look at what's going on here. Come up with a plan. Because I, we, I keep hearing you say, let's keep it, let's keep it, let's keep it. You're going to fix it. Can you give us a roadmap to what you think can help us fix the issues that are going on here? And have you listened to the issues that we're having? Because everyone keeps saying, I don't know what's going on here. And I think if you're here speaking, you know what's going on in our chat. That's a reasonable question. Um, and I think one of the first things that CSPCA would do is if they come in is to determine the issues and what is the roadmap. So no, we don't typically go out into a district without being called in <coughs> some format. Um, so we come in on request and then we look at the issues from that point forward. I, I, I don't think you answered my question. Sure. We can just let Mr. Wilson respond and then you can do the follow-up. Okay. 
I answer to her. So. Yeah, I just I, I don't think he understood my question. I just want to can you get to the mic so they can hear you? I, I, I'm saying the information that when you were asked to speak here, were you given information about what's going on here? So you can give because if you're speaking on pro merit, to me you should be bringing some resolutions that you see that you guys know that you can give us a roadmap to fix. So my last question is: Do you know the issues that are going here when you're asking us to retain the merit system? Did I have the list um, that Kenny gave? No. Um, am I shocked by any of anything on the list? No. Um, so I, I think it, 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 the process is not one of investigation. Not about the process, not, not any list. Not asking about what you were told when you were coming here. Um, I was told that there were concerns, and yes, I heard they, they related to the director, the hiring process, very basic information. I think is insufficient for anybody to make a recommendation on what actions would be appropriate. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, let's make no mistake. Uh, the school boards association is a resource and they can be a valuable resource if they're called in timely to be called in when a petition comes around that says, let's remove the merit system doesn't do anybody any favors. It puts the, the personnel commission, uh, at, at, at odds, they, you know, they're at a short time trying to work this. The key point that I want to make here, though, is yes, they can be called in to help build a roadmap, to help investigate. They haven't been. There's no guarantee. And honestly, with the tradition, with this merit system and the commissioners and the personnel director, I would not expect that they would be called in and given any kind of authority to fix the issues that we're dealing with now. Go ahead and ask your question. So based upon that, because our director is a board member, shouldn't he have given our commissioners um, the resource to come in and fix the problem since he's been hearing this at our PC meetings over and over and over again? You know, anything I say would be sheer speculation. Uh, why it didn't happen earlier, I don't know. George and I have talked for years about a way to get the association in early prior to this moment right now. Um, and I don't know what the answer is, but it would be beneficial to lots of merit systems that are in conflict if they use the association as a tool early on. It's much easier to solve problems before this moment. Mr. Wilson, did you want to respond? I could only build on that. Okay. Did you have another question? No, that's it. Is there anyone else uh, that would like to ask a question that's present at this time? Are we ready for closing We're going to do closing comments in just a minute. I just want to give that final opportunity for any members of the... Go ahead. If you want to come forward, you can please come forward. We are... At a little over five minutes, so we have time for a couple more. I ask that if you do have a question, just to save some time, if you can come forward. Uh, if you know you have another question, and then just line up, and please feel free to ask your question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stephanie Felix, and I'm in favor of eliminating the personnel or the merit system here. My question is, um, I know in your comments, and there is a question behind this, but this has been going on for 10 years. And the last time when we had tried to remove it, there was a lot of retaliation, abuse of power. My, my question is, knowing, because it's been going on for so long, and when it didn't pass the last time, why wasn't it fixed five years ago? Why didn't you come in to fix it then? Because it's the same issues, except they're more intensified because there's more people that has been affected by this. I don't understand, I mean, you're here saying, you know, to help, but why didn't you fix it five years ago when we would be in this position now? Um, the, the, like I said, the association is called in, and I'm thinking of a district that called CSPCA in Northern California, and they were having conflicts with the director's role. Um, and at that time, we developed a template for where the problem area, where does the director need to stop? Where do the conflicts occur? And how can they be avoided? 
And that was a written MOU that was designed to be reviewed by CSEA, the commission and the district to try to come to an understanding about where those conflicts are. And to the best of my knowledge, it was years ago that that did resolve the conflict. But we were called in before a pro-con debate and before people were asked to vote on the merit system. And that's how CSPCA operates. If we don't hear about it or we're not requested to be called in through the executive director, then it's unlikely that we would just have an ear to the ground and show up to resolve something. That That's just not the process. Should it be? I'm open to it. Mr. Wilson, did you want to respond? I think the example of uh, this vote five years ago and the, the actions uh, taken then that prevented people from voting and, and made people feel like they were being retaliated against is a clear indication that we knew this was going on at the very minimum five years ago. Your personnel commissioners knew, your personnel director knew five years ago this was happening. That would have been a great time to call in whatever resources they have. Um, I would also proffer that the, the Personnel Commissioner Association it would also be an ally and an asset to us if we called upon them a year or so down the road saying, hey, how, could you help us put together a, a system as well? But I think where we're at right now, the choice is clear that we, that we eliminate the current personnel system. Go ahead. So going off here, I have another question with the statement that she made. So again, Stephanie Felix um, in favor of eliminating the personnel for merit system. But if you knew five years ago, all these issues. So what you're saying is because we had the same type of forum, there were the cons, you guys spoke about it. To me, the way I see it as a member here, classified member, is that you guys were aware. And it just seems like the vote went it didn't go the way where it was passed. You guys ignored us. We, we were ignored, like nobody cared. So is this is this gonna happen? To me, it's like you're, you're letting our members know they need to vote yes, because if not, the same thing's gonna happen for the next 10 years or five years. So to me, you're validating that it needs to go. Before we comment, just want to remind the audience that we ask questions, that we're, we're not here to debate our points. You're here to ask a question on the question and answer mic. Uh, would either of you like to respond? Go ahead. I'm really impressed with your questions, to be honest with you. You have conflicts and you're here today to express those. And that encourages me to believe that there are solutions at hand besides voting out the merit system. I think down line, you are likely to see that you just created another set of problems instead of fixing the merit system you have. The CSPCA, um, uh, to the best of my knowledge, is willing to come in now. I can't speak to the past. I don't know what happened. I wasn't in the loop with regard to anyone requesting from this district any assistance. And that, and neither is George, and George would know. So that, that is a breakdown in communication. And I take responsibility for it on, on behalf of the association, but I'm also in a go forward mode and willing to be a problem solver. Everything from director evaluation um, to how things operate in the district, efficiency, those should all be reviewed to see what the solutions are. Uh, at this time, uh, the 30 minutes are up, so we're going to go ahead and shift to closing remarks. I'd like to call back to the podium and the mic, uh, Mr. Kenny Wilson, Senior Labor Relations Representative, who will be afforded 10 minutes for closing remarks. Thank you all very much for uh, the great questions, uh, very good participation. Uh, very briefly, my comments are going to take uh, 10 minutes. Yes, indeed, we have resources to help fix problems. They haven't worked for 10 years. There's no guarantee that if this personnel commission with these commissioners and this personnel director is allowed to exist for at least the next year, there is no guarantee that they would be able to call in the personnel, the, the California personnel merit system uh, resources 
and give them the authority and the, the latitude they need. That is at the personnel commission's discretion. The same personnel commission that has brought us here today. Uh, the, the classified employees, the classified leadership in uh, Victor Valley Union High School District have determined that it's safer and they provide, they, they, they have more confidence because the district administration presents more credibility than the people design and the commission that is there to help protect classified employees. Quite simply, at this point, we see no other option other than vote yes and let's start brand new. Let's start with a, with a, a, a school district uh, administration that we believe we can trust and let's get the roadblocks out of the way and, and begin building this relationship. We need to come out, we need to be in person and we need to vote on January 18th. That's where I am. At uh, this time, uh, Mr. George Cole and all the others have a right. You have 10 minutes. I'd like to turn the mic over to Mr. George Cole. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this has been a very difficult process, and it's been very difficult for me to hear a lot of the uh, issues that are going on because my heart has been with this district ever since I first started here. I'm part of the community. I live in Apple Valley. You know, I've just, you know, it is... I've been to commission meetings here. I've worked with Deshaun on a lot of issues. I'm hearing from a source out there, this may not be the majority. And I'm thinking that maybe it will be kept. Maybe there's not enough in to vote it out. Even if it's kept, I would like to, I would like to be able myself to talk to Deshaun and approach the commission. I'd like to sit down with the, at a commission meeting. I'd like to sit down myself, have a conversation. And the commissioners know me. They've met me before. I would like to have a conversation with the commission and Deshaun being president as well. And I think we could sit down and start that roadmap, like John said, that we need to fix what's, what's broken. You know, and even if it's only a small number of people that – are complaining and even if it's not the majority of the employees out there i still am concerned that there's a small number complaining. i what are you voted in or voted out i hope it i hope it uh, loses the vote to vote it out i hope you keep it but i really seriously and i deshaun and i go way back we have a good relationship with each other and i've used his knowledge and skills with other districts to help me there. So I am got a, I have a cognitive disconnect in my brain right now from what's going on, from what I know about Deshaun and what I know about this district. And I think if everyone would give us an opportunity, I would propose that, that I could go meet with the commission and we could share, even if it wins, let's just share with them the things that went on and, uh, you know, like you said, there was an open mic issue that should never happen. It happens to our U.S. Congress. It happens to judges. It happens, unfortunately, a lot of places people say things you know, just casually. But I think every classified employee needs to know that the commission is supporting them, that they have a right to come to the commission meeting, meet with the commission, talk to the commission. And I, there's just... These are good people here. I really don't want to see the merit system go because trust me, I've I've been in districts up and down this state. I traveled for 10 years up and down this state to merit districts and to non-merit districts that want me to come in because they want to become there. So I've been on both sides of the picture. And I tell you, when the merit when a merit system works well, it works well. When I when I retired, I was at Hayward Unified. It was a it was a district up in the Bay Area, very uh, right over by Berkeley. It was a very difficult, complex district to work in. But I know when I, you know, when I left there, they they were really on solid ground because we did we did set up communications. And I know Deshaun would be willing to do that. He doesn't want to see his merit system fail either. So that is my closing that I have to say. So. 
I wish everyone well on this. Okay, just want to close this up. Uh, thank everyone for attending in person. Thank you all of you who are joining us uh, virtually online. Once again, thank you to Victor Valley uh, High School for hosting us. As a reminder, uh, January 18th from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, please bring a photo identification. Four locations, Adelanto High School, Lakeview Leadership Academy, Silverado High School, Victor Valley High School. And then at 5 p.m., the results will be tabulated right here, uh, both in person, of course in person, and it will be streamed online. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you.